Hello everyone, welcome to another Python tutorial series. In today's video, I'm going to create a 3D race cars game with the Ursina engine, and I hope you like it. So first, let's import the modules and create a window uh, with an orange background. So to import our modules, we'll import Ursina. So we'll import star. And we also want to import the random module, and we'll use, we'll use that later on in the video. So to set up our window, I'll create an app variable equal to Ursina. So the window color equal to the color orange. And I'll run the app like that. Now we're gonna we're gonna create a car uh, racing game. So we need to create a track. I'll have the track equal to an entity. That's the model equal to a cube. And that's the color of the track equal to green. And that's the scale equal to ten. 0.560 and the position of the track to 0, 0. And lastly, I need to set a texture, which is an image in my assets folder, so assets, and it is track.png. But what I need to do is now copy and paste this app.run and put it after this track entity. Like that. So if I decide to save and run this, even if we run it, our track isn't shown, but we do have the orange background. And the reason our track isn't shown is because of our camera position. So let's change that real quick. So let me set the camera position equal to 0, 8, negative 26, so 0 on the x-axis, 8 on the y-axis, and negative 26 on the z-axis. Then I'll set the rotation, so camera.rotation around the x-axis to 20. And now if I save and run this, now we have the track shown in a 3D view. And now, uh, basically the track looks narrower when it's further away. So now it looks more 3D. So next we're going to create our race cars, and to do that we'll create an entity class first for our class, for our cars. And so what I'll do is at the very top, I'll create class car, I'll pass in an entity parameter. I have a scale y variable equal to 0.001, a scale z variable equal to 0 0.06. I define uh, in it, I'll pass in self image scale x position and the angle I'll call super dot in it and I set self dot parent equal to track self dot model equal to cube self dot texture equal to image I set self dot scale equal to scale x the scale y self dot scale y self dot scale z Set the self dot position equal to the position parameter, and I'll set the collider equal to a box collider. And lastly, I'll set the rotation around the y axis equal to the angle. So now we can load our car images and then put them in a list. So I'm going to create a list of cars. So car, cars images. The first image is going to be my assets folder, so car0.png. Then it's going to be another car, car1.png. And then car2.png. Car3.png. And my last one, car4.png. And so those are going to be all our car images. So we're going to have five uh, cars in this game. So now we need to create five car entities, which we using uh, the entity class that we just created. So I'll go down and create our cars. I'll set car zero equal to a new car. I'll pass in car, uh, the list that we created for the first image. And then the second 
parameter, which is the uh, the scale x, I'll set it as 0.15. Then for the position, I'll pass in 0.05, 1, negative 0.12. And lastly, for the angle, I'll pass in 0. So I'll copy this, and what I'll do is paste this for the rest of the cars. So that's our car 0. Now it's car 1, 2, 3, uh, 4. So five cards in total. And I'll change these as well. Instead of setting these scales as 0.15, I'm going to change them as well to 0 0.08, 0 0.07, 0 0.07, and 0.07. And for these positions, instead of negative 0.12 for our first for car one set it to just 0.2. For card 2, I'll do 0.19, 1, and then 0.1. For card 3, I'll do negative 0.09, 1, 0. And lastly, for card 4, I'll set it to negative 0.23 on the x-axis, 1 on the y-axis, and then negative Point 0.1 on the z-axis. And for cars 3 and 4, I'll set these to 180 degrees and 180 degrees. And so that means both cars will rotate 180 degrees in the y direction because they'll be going in the opposite direction. So if I save this and I run it, we'll see 5 cars with different colors and types in different positions. Uh, we'll see a red car, which is car 0, and that's going to be the player in this game. So we notice that these two cars are facing the opposite way, and these two cars are facing the same way as the red car. And that's because these two cars, we change the angle to 180 degrees. So we'll also put car 1 uh, to car 4 in a list for later use. So I have another list, which is just cars this time. I'll pass in car 1, car 2, car 3, and car 4 into this list. And next we can animate the track so that it looks like the red car will be moving forward. And to do that, we need to create a variable offset and initialize it at zero. So why don't I create an offset variable, set equal to zero. And now we need to create an update function and in it we need to declare the offset as a global variable. So above our car class, I define an update function. So create uh, def define uh, update and then set global offset so now each time this update function runs I'll increase the offset by time.dt multiplied by 0.3 and 0.3 is going to represent a value that determines how fast the offset is, is. and I need to set the attribute of the track to the texture offset uh, with 0 in the offset. So if I save this and when we run it, we should see that the track is going to be animated in a sense that the car is moving forward. And so now it looks like the car is moving forward and these two cars, the yellow and blue one, are also moving forward because the track looks like it's coming uh, towards us. So now we also want to be able to move the player card through the keyboard. So if I press like an A D using the WASD keys, I want the car to move left or right. So if I close this, oops, let me close this. Now in the update function, I have car 0 x plus equal to held keys. And when the D key is held, uh, basically, I'm going to move the car to the left. So multiplied by time by dt, multiplied by 0.2. And car 0.x minus equal to held keys. A time by dt, multiplied by 0.2. So when I hold the D key, my car is going to go to the left. When I hold the A key, my car is going to go to... 
I'm sorry, when I hold my D key, my car is going to go to the right. And when I hold my A key, the car is going to go to the left. So if I save run this, and I hold A, my red car will go to the left. And when I hold D, my red car is going to go right. So I can move it like that. And now you see that it works. But you notice that if I decide to uh, go off the track, you see that now my car is able to do that, which we don't actually want. So we need to handle some boundary checking. And so to handle this boundary checking, all you need to do is check for the car's x position. So if car 0.x is greater than or equal to 0.24, so if the x position is trying to get over this uh, portion on the x-axis, then we don't want that to happen, so we'll just set it equal to that position. If the car's x position is trying to get less than or equal to negative 0.28, then we'll set the car's x position equal to negative 0.28. So now if I run this, the player is able to stay in these lanes. So it's unable to go out of this lane. So we also need to move cars uh, 1 to car 4 as well. So basically what we could do is, let me close this, we can iterate through our cars, so for car in cars, which is the list we made earlier of the cars uh, 1 through 4, we could check if car dot rotation dot rotation y is equal to 0, which is for cars 1 and 2, for cars 1 and car 2. So if it's 0, we'll set cars.z minus equal to time.dt multiplied by a random number, so random.uniform from 0.02 to 0.05. Else, which is now for car, car 3 and car 4, we'll set car.z minus equal to time.dt multiplied by random.uniform. 0.09 from 0.09 to 0.12 and so the speed for each car is going to be a random value and because car 1 and car 2 go in the same direction with the player car their speed will be smaller than car 3 and 4 and so the speed of each car is going to be relative to the player's car so let me save this and run it now we see that these two cars are they look like they're moving backwards because of the loop that we just created earlier. And also the other two cars in the opposite lane, they went out of the screen. So when cars 1 and 4 go out of the bottom boundary, so 1, 2, 4 go out of the bottom boundary, no cars are going to be left except for the red car. So we'll do some boundary checking for these four cars so that once they cross the bottom boundary and go out of the window, they'll reappear from the top boundary. And so to create that, or to actually check for that disappearance, so bottom boundary checking, we want to check if car.z, if it's less than negative 0.3, then we'll set car.z equal to 0.4. And so now if I save this and run it, notice that when these cars actually go past this bottom boundary, they reappear at the top. And let me show that again. And this works for every single car. So you see these blue, the blue and yellow car works as well. And the uh, light blue and the gray car, or white car, is also appearing from the top. So next we need to create some sort of collision, because you probably saw earlier that the red car is able to pass through the other cars. So we'll create a Boolean variable and initialize it as false. And I'll do that over here. Let's create a collision variable and set it equal to false. And we need to declare it as a global variable in the update function. So we have a global offset and we can pass and we can have global collision as well. So now we need to check if so we check the bottom boundary 
Now we need to check if the absolute value of car 0.x minus car.x is less than 0.05, and if the absolute value of car 0.z minus car.z, if it's less than 0.05, then we set the closing to true. So these two if statements are checking if the x and the z coordinates of uh, two different cars if they intersect with each other. And so when they do intersect with each other, we're going to set the collision variable equal to true. And essentially, once there is a collision, so I'll do the collision checking here. So if there is a collision, then we'll set car zero dot rotation, run the y axis, increase it by time dot dt multiplied by 100. And essentially, if car zero dot rotation y, if it's greater than 360, what's we'll a collision of false? And car zero dot rotation y equal to zero. So now, if I save and run this, basically my main goal as the red car is to dodge the other cars. So you see here, I'm in a tough spot, and if I collide with this white car my red car basically does a flip. And once the flip is, or once the red car does a 360 flip, the it gets back on its wheels basically. So there it goes. And now the red car is fine. Let me cloud with this one. And now the red car uh, is also fine again. So this is the end of this video. If you have any comments, please put them below at the comment section. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.